Toy Tractor Times is here in Dyersville, Iowa with Simon Family Farms and they've got a great Instagram page with many followers sharing all the details of a 164 scale Iowa dairy farm and we're here with Doug Simon who is the creator and builder of this great display and Doug's going to give us a little tour of some of the details and highlights that people may see on Instagram and then maybe we want to learn about how to build it on the display. Absolutely, thanks Jason. Um, so this is the Simon Family Farms display, 8x8 eight eight display set in northeastern Iowa, around the Dyersville, Iowa area. Uh, primarily a 125 cow dairy farm set on uh, roughly 500, 550 acres of soybean, corn, and alfalfa. Um, starting here, we got the pasture area and the freestall barn, which was built by Andrew Winschittle, which is one of my favorite pieces on the display as a building. It shows the detail inside of all the individual rafters and stalls, as well as the uh, self-propelled J-Lore uh, TMR mixer that he built. I'll zoom in on that so people can see it. It's a very nice detailed piece. Yeah, scratch built out of brass. It's a very nice piece. You know, it's neat to see a smaller uh, item like that. A lot of times on the displays we see a 10-wheel truck with the biggest mixer out there available, mm -hmm. and it's nice to to see a family farm size one. Yeah, it's it's really nice having specialty, uh, specialty dairy equipment like that for displays now, just for the smaller smaller guys in mind. Well, one of my favorite parts of in seeing your Instagram pictures is just how realistic uh, the display looks, and we can see the pasture area uh, where you've got some fenced off, where I guess it slopes down. You don't want the cows in there. Yeah, the fenced off or some seeding that's been done over, and just yeah. let it grow over the years. And then uh, I really like these uh, kind of little laneways that don't get used all the time, but mm -hmm. the equipment and the growth around it is just. Uh, it's nice detail to a farm. Yeah, something like that would be where, uh, for good example, what we're depicting here is chopping corn silage, where we're unloading into the silo, for example. We would bring the tractors and wagons around the pathway and then up around the silo just to make it easier to access back into the field. And then you've got um, all the different uh, accessories that would go with a skid steer loader. Correct, yep. Uh, and that that's pretty neat, neat to see a gal yeah steer made by Lee Johnson excellent piece there all the all the attachments are removable you got the pallet forks and the round bale uh, sorry the scraper the tire scraper there for the freestall barn and then just the regular material bucket and the bale spear and I like this new idea spreader complete with uh, manure still kind of caked inside there on the chains and yeah I made that realistic yeah Randy Glick made that and I just detailed it up a little bit you know grab that just to show the detail just a little weathered effect to make it look like they're so what do you get that caked on manure look how do you um, so there is a there is a product made by MIG products that is a uh, it's a paint based a little bit tackier it's almost like a glue paint mixture that has static grass in it okay that you can cake on and make for muddy ruts and tracks like that that a lot of well, the let's see and we can see you've got the static grass down here so it's a similar material just yep, uh, exactly yep more of a caked look so uh, I guess as we you know continue on a, again a variety of a field cultivator a Kraus early Kraus accelerator before mm -hmm. the orange uh, coon years uh, what what building is this right here this would be the calf building I lift off the roof here that has all the individual calf bins that was made by Vicki Peterson and complete with calf bottles and mineral tubs that were made by Jensen Diecast that are 3D printed add the extra little details onto your displays that's pretty cool yeah. and uh, speaking of detail too I noticed back here you've got some uh, water tanks behind the the main dairy barn with yeah, some hose. So the, yeah so those are tanks for uh, liquid cattle supplement like molasses or something that you okay. can and that is bring it brought in on a, a tanker truck and pumped off into the tanks that is mixed with the TMR. Oh, great detail. And then uh, what what kind of cows are over here in this? Uh, this so building? those would be heifers. And on the farm, a nice little detail is there's four different size animals on the farm. 
whereas you start with the calves and you got you know you got the yearlings and then you got mm -hmm. the heifers and then you got the actual dairy cows and they're all different sizes whether you got the regular urtle calves to HO scale cows you you know you're mixing mixing everything to have the different sizes to depict the different age groups of the cattle no that's neat you got a nice 806 and what kind of mixer is uh or TMR is that? So that would just be a regular uh, Schuler feeder wagon. Okay. So kind of before the TMR, just Correct. to feed out. Yeah, just to feed out. Oh, that's nice. It's already pre-mixed. So. One thing I wanted to, you, we were talking earlier uh, before we move on to the other side of the display is that you have uh, bees out here too, which are important on a dairy farm for mm -hmm. the alfalfa and the crops. And yep. that's so my, to see beehives. Yeah, my father-in-law is actually a, a newly found beekeeper for a hobby. And I wanted to incorporate something like that on the display, just a little extra detail like that. So, well, as we come around here, uh, I wanted to point out again when you're looking at detail, and I remember when this display was part of the competition at the National Farm Toy Show. Mm -hmm. uh, that what really stood out to me was the connecting of all the power lines. That each of these buildings that has electricity has a line running to it. You know, throughout the farm, and that's just a great detail that you know. If you're not looking up, you might not notice, but uh, when you're looking down, it certainly stands out across the farm. Absolutely, something like that really adds that extra detail. Uh, so we got uh, older corn crib here, and uh, some hay racks, and what's in what's inside this next building here? So this would be the hay shed, is what this building would be okay. called. Just an extra equipment storage there, and as well as well as some hay and straw big squares. Uh, starting over here, we got the the portable uh, cattle chute there for clipping and fitting cattle. A little bit of a vet um, for the cattle there too. But next to that, we got some extra set of duels and the grain cleaner and the roller mill, both made by Andrew Winshill. And those are all just the. Yeah just those three things there just again the details that you see sitting around a farm and just kind of puts it over the top for absolutely realism. yep and then some cooler equipment here too yeah we got the uh the grain drill made by eric peterson there i that see was... it's got this grass seed attachment too for uh, mm -hmm. putting out new uh, forage crops yep then we just got a little uh tractor fab there rotary hoe and then next to that's a scratch cast new idea corn picker which um, we can see the corn crib here across the farm, so it's still getting used to mm -hmm. somewhat. And yep, a little bit for stock cows and whatnot. So then, then we have the Jacob Larson Ford bidirectional, which is an excellent piece addition to the display. Nice little versatile tractor. Very nice, and a little bit more of equipment on the outside here. We've got a New Holland hay tether, a John Deere Cultum mulcher, and a New Holland bar rake. Mm -hmm. Now here's a really nice standout piece, just for its rarity, of a mix of uh, white farm equipment and internationals on this display. Absolutely, this was a white American 80 made by Mike Sevick that he had a video made on his YouTube channel. Sure. And he's the Model Farm Studio. Correct. Did an excellent job on this, transforming that Ertl white American into the PCC here, as well as the Lorenz grinder mixer that he detailed up for me. Uh, that's a great little combo there for mixing and grinding feed on the farm. Sure is, and then this is, I guess, the kind of the commodity shed where the different feeds are stored. And Correct. Yep. On the very left-hand side, you got corn gluten, and then the middle bay you have soybean meal, and then you got cotton seed there in the third bay. And then uh, another thing that's common in Iowa is uh, putting up stover in the fall for, uh, I guess, you feed it and bed it. And Correct. So we've got a Heston uh, stack hand tucked in here and yeah it's this, to... yeah the stack hand doesn't get used much anymore but back in the day they would have used it for corn stock stacks there to um, for bedding and, and such for the sure. different sheds and whatnot that but now they have moved more to big square bales and we can see a new idea forge head that's been retired for hay stick, stuck back here and yeah I like the just the detail too here with the vents and things on the buildings for the animals and Again, that power line connecting the power to run it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, one of the really big standout pieces, I guess we'll do, kind of do the drone shot of it coming over here, is the corn forge harvesting. 
And uh, what's your lineup here for silage? It's a lot of silage here. We got the Case IH 8950, which is the farm's big tractor, made by Aaron Jensen. Excellent piece, one of my favorites on the farm. Followed by that, it's a scratch cast New Holland FP240 chopper. Three Cute. row head. Yeah, three row corn head. And then with the Meyer chopper box, which is a H&S that's painted up like a Meyer. That was made by uh, Terre Haute Customs. Scott Mueller. Very cool. Mm -hmm. See the overhead shot of it. Rolling through the corn. So as we come around the cornfield, and again you can see the nice detail of making the curve there on the headlands. We've got some more calves in a pen. Mm -hmm. And what is this building used for? Is that So that was originally used for pigs. Okay. And that was an old hog swine barn. And then that was retrofitted to hold uh, yearling young stock for the cattle. So as you know, as the farm crisis and everything went happening, the farm switched to more of a dairy aspect rather than swine and sure different animals and whatnot. So and I've got really great detail just in the landscaping that the way that land rolls through this ditch here and then runs up higher uh, to where the house is. And uh, obviously the focal point of the farm is the center here with the traditional uh, large dairy barn with the three silos and mm -hmm. just kind of wanted to point out to people how that the silos are cut in for the silo rooms which is a nice detail not just having them set next Absolutely. to the barn but they're part of the barn. We've got that garage door there for the skid steer to go in there. Mm -hmm. and just little details on the barn. You have the you have the barn quilt that my wife painted that just adds to the focal point of the whole barn and then you got little minor I think I see a cat there in the hay. Yep, loft you too. have a cat there and you got the the bulk tank sticking out as it shows progression in addition to the farm over the years where they put in a larger tank that and then, you know, just other details around this area that I added. I added the the Iowa flag on the harvester. Oh, that I've I saw that earlier, that's pretty neat. Yeah, that I've noticed in farms around here, just something a little different, you know. And then um uh, it looks like there's a sign here too yep. on the pole. It's an Iowa Century Farm given out by the Iowa Farm Bureau at the State Fair every year. Just shows a farm that's been in the family for a hundred years. Looks like the milk truck's on its way out. Yep, that milk truck is a replica of my uncle's that he's still hauling milk in Northeast Iowa, and the uh, tank was 3D printed by Josh Rout. Very nice. It looks like you had chickens at one time too. Yep, chickens at one time. That's just storage now. Let's see too, you got the shingle effect. Mm -hmm. Well we come around to the house, a traditional looking uh, family farmhouse and uh, I guess before we do that we should show the the farm sign and logo there. And again just the landscaping, uh, the detail down to a dog house. I got the pop-up camper in the backyard in the garden. Mm -hmm. Got the John Deere lawnmower the wagon complete with the uh, satellite dish yeah, that's absolutely. pretty cool absolutely yeah <laughs> and the tire tire swing clothesline propane tank that's a lot of detail uh, and where do you where have you found pieces like this to kind of give that more you know lifelike living i guess the house looks lived in rather than just sitting there sure a lot of the pieces came from Aaron Jensen with Jensen diecast including the mower and a lot of the pieces in the mower you, everything down and even to the little rubber boots on the back porch there just everything like yeah. that he fills a lot of voids oh, in the I hobby. Notice, uh, there's even a scarecrow here in the garden absolutely that's a, I enjoy filming this and sharing it because I could take a thousand pictures and I know we're probably still missing some things <laughs> with the video but it it really is nice to see yeah I try to point out as much as I can I got the the rocking chairs on the front porch there you can see with another pair of boots and the family sitting out watching the chopping going on in the field. And that's where I would be sitting. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh what is this little square with the cinder blocks on it? So that would be a well. Okay. Yep. With a slab of cement on it. As we come around we got some grain bins for the farm. Yep. And, uh, grain bins I just detailed up a little bit. 
and then uh, painted them with the Rust-Oleum hammered effect just to give it not so much of a shine but just enough to make it look like a little bit of age on it so then we've got the big shop building and the machine shed mm -hmm. you can see here the farm's got a new idea uni system chopper which I, I'm guessing you used to open up the fields before the New Holland got out there correct yep that was another piece made by Mike with Model Farm Studio great addition to this display very excited to get that. Uh, the detail, just looking at the lights and the mirrors and the spout and then the weathered effect. Mike did a great job yeah. using the Farm Factor. Absolutely, kit using the, the Farm Factor 3D kit from Jeff Hintz. Excellent piece. And we lift off the roofs to the shop and machine shed. Show you in there. Definitely see some nice pieces in here. Uh, you know, one of the standout pieces you've had and won a Toy Tractor Times Toy Talk contest is your 8820 uh, Deer Combine. Yeah, in there. yep. Made by Matt Hollingshead. Very nice piece. One of my favorites. Complete with the 8-row corn head as well as the the John Deere gr grain head there. We've got an S1900 truck. and Yep, that was uh, made by Jared Turner. Um, then next to that is the... Started out as a scratch cast. Heston 4910 Baylor, but uh, another piece Mike Savick detailed up a little bit that just shows the added detail. They gave it that next level for that scratch cast Baylor. Oh, we've got the bale in the chamber there. Mm -hmm. Shows the bale there and then the updated hitch on the front. And it's a nice mix of equipment because we've got Heston, New Holland in here, and uh, we've got a John Deere square baler with the, the kicker on it. Mm hmm. Yep, and they got the Case, I, Case IH 600 blower that was made by Eric Peterson, all out of brass. Now, is this a Landall? Uh, Correct. Chis I guess, is it a Coulter chisel, mulch ripper? Yeah, I, I would say I call it a ripper, but I yeah, mean, yep, it's a five shank made by Adam Frerichs. I believe he said it's the smallest that Landall makes. And it's like, well, that's just what I need for this <laughs> little farm. Let's go on 89.50. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Got the Vermeer round baler, uh, eight-row John Deere corn planter. Yep, eight-row John Deere corn planter. And then the Vermeer round baler. And, and a New Holland uh, disc bond. Yep. And it looks like a Ford snowblower. Yep, Ford this snowblower the for the, the bidirectional. bidirectional. You got the hay head there for the New Holland chopper. Then a got a snowmobile, lawn roller, some yep, other things. Yep, just some added extra details there in the shop. And then if we could walk through the door there, we'd be into the shop, which has a tremendous amount of detail. Again, you know, the oil and the grease tracks and mm -hmm. all the parts. Again, Aaron Jensen's really helped out. He's really filled right the down to the, grades, the yep. heater there and drill press. I'm sure I'm missing things on this side. And your service truck looks like it's uh, fully loaded to take care of problems out in the field. Yeah, he's doing some, just it's a uh, local fellow from in town there that came out to do some service work on the, the uni. What model international is coming in with a load of silage here? That is a international 1586 okay. red stripe. Very nice. That was made by Aaron Jensen. And then uh, we've got the Coon Knight uh, V-Spreader. Yep, and a Pat. Is that Pat's? Uh, yep, Pat's barn cleaner. cleaner. What tractor is usually on that? Must that be pulling either, the wagon today. Yeah, that would either be the 1586 or the white 180, something like that on there. So yeah, you got some cool uh, big tractor power here for the, mm -hmm. the classic yeah, two-wheel drive. Absolutely. So we've got a 76 uh, Black Stripe International 1066 on the Ag Bagger, and I think we saw this in St. Louis with the Ag Bagging operation and all the way down to the support back there and then a white 2180 field boss yes correct that's unloading silage right there unloading corn silage into the egg bagger and we can see all the cattle out here um, got a noon um, spreader yep in the pit and a lot of things like a, a detail about the cattle it's no two animals are painted the same wow they're all all different. And 120 cows on this farm? Yep, exactly. No two yeah. are the same. Uh, Lee Mahone and 
uh, a couple other I know Chris Steve did some as well as uh, Russ Pryor uh, that's a good team of people yep they all did excellent jobs help me out with the cattle as we wind up in this corner I, I just wanted to compliment you again I, I just like these laneways and how it follows the contour of the field and down the hill and cutting through the soybean field right back to the farm that's uh, something you see in a lot of places and also the way the soybeans uh, kind of squeeze in through the slope and mm -hmm. widen out trying to farm as much land as they can so this must be a hay field up here then correct or grass yep. and well, thank you for the, the tour of this. It's just always exciting to see, and uh, I highly encourage people to follow um, follow you on Instagram, Simon Family Farms on Instagram. That's right. Or Absolutely. at Simon Family Farms. Yep. Absolutely it's, appreciate and, uh, Jason. You share uh, just every couple of days. Yep, every couple pictures. days I like to keep people updated on what's going on on the farm. So. And you can see all this great equipment throughout the seasons, and I always uh, look forward to seeing what updates you'll have next. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for the tour. Appreciate it.